everybody. I'm Kim, and welcome to Old School, a podcast from the Old Davy School Historical Museum. I've had an opportunity recently to go through old recordings with interviews from some of the early pioneers. Some who arrived in Davy in 1910, 1920, teachers and students from the school, families who farmed here. And over the next few weeks, I'm hoping to have those for you here. I have to go back deep into the realms of technology and transfer some of the recordings from tape cassettes, but I'm very thankful to have them and know that you'll enjoy hearing the firsthand stories too. Our first interview today is Edna Hammer Griffin, a student and beloved teacher of Davie Elementary, longtime Davie resident, and former president of the Davie Historical Society. Edna Bessie Hammer was born to William Hammer and Bessie Hill Hammer. Her father, William, also known as Ed, was the eldest of the 12 Hammer children. The family arrived in Davie in 1913, all the way from Alberta, Canada. Her mother, Bessie Hill, was 15 when her family moved to Davie in 1910 from Calumet, Michigan. You'll hear her talk a little bit about her mother's family. The men came down in 1909 to start the farms, and then the women followed after. The couple met in Davie, they were married in 1920, and they lived in Miami. Edna was born on March 13, 1921 in Miami, and her younger sister Lila followed a few years later. After the 1926 hurricane, the family moved back to Davie to farm. They had an orange grove, raised strawberries, and started a sod business. Ed actually invented a sod cutter, which saved hours of difficult work. Edna attended Davie Elementary through 6th grade and then went on to Fort Lauderdale High School. She then went on to study education at Florida State College for Women, which is today's Florida State University, which is my alma mater, so go Knowles. After graduating, she returned home to Davie and to her own former classrooms here at Davie Elementary in 1946. One newspaper recalls Griffin would paint ceramic donkeys, the school mascot, and pass them out as gifts for retiring teachers who were leaving the school. She holds the only mold for those donkeys, said her stepson, Wes Griffin. It was her way of giving back to the school. Edna married Jack Griffin in 1969 and continued teaching at Davie Elementary until her retirement in 1980. She remained active in the community, serving as the president of the Davie Historical Society and was involved during the restoration of the school building. She played the piano and organ for the Davie United Methodist Church for more than 40 years. She passed away in 1996 at the age of 74. And when I hear stories from former students of Davie Elementary, they most often recall Mrs. Griffin as a favorite teacher. This interview comes from the 1991 Orange Blossom Festival, where they had a speaker's corner where folks from the community could tell their stories. So there's some background noise and music that you'll hear. But Mrs. Griffin talks about her teacher, Mrs. Althea Jenny, teaching during the 1947 flood and more. So enjoy. My mother's family came in 1909. That is the men came in 1909. Black dirt, they called it, black gold. Um, the men came, as I said, in 1909, and they they had some luck that year, I guess, because they went back in 1910 and brought the women and the children. Um, that was, my grandfather was Tom Hill. Um, my, my my dad's father was William Hammer, and my dad was the oldest of the 12 ch Hammer children that came. but Grandpa Hammer or Grandpa Hill had a, an orange grove, grove just below where the um, Hollywood Federal Bank is and we live on that property today. Um, the orange grove had been flattened by the 26th hurricane so my father gave up his business in Miami and came to Davie to take care of the orange grove and of course then I came to Davie in January of 1927. I went to school in the Davie Elementary School, first grade through the sixth grade, and then as everybody did back in those days, we were bused to Fort Lauderdale High School starting in the seventh grade. Yesterday we spoke about Mrs. Jenny. Everyone loved Mrs. Jenny. She had been at Davie School around 35 years. I think she retired at 35 years. 
um, she had always said she was going to teach until I came back from college and took her place, and it happened that way. She retired in 1946 in, uh, in, in, the, spring, uh, yes, in the spring. I graduated from college from FSU, which was Florida State College for Women at that time, in 1946, and in the uh, fall, I started teaching at Davie Elementary School. I took Mrs. Jenny's second grade. Before, up until that time, uh, there had always been at least two or three grades in a room. The, this was at the time when the population started to expand, I think, in Davie, because it was the first time that we had a first grade in one room by itself and a second grade in a room by itself. Uh, before that, it had always been doubled up. Um, we, the school had the most beautiful playground, I think, of any place in the country around here. We had, I think it's um, about eight acres of land. I don't think it was 10 acres. I think it was just under 10 acres. But the grass, the playground itself was the best grass for the children to play on. They just, it was just fantastic. The, uh, I don't know how many of you know it, but during the Depression, when Roosevelt had all the CCC camps and, and one thing or another, they planted the melaleuca trees that are all around that school at that time. Uh, so the children had shade trees. It was just an ideal place, the playground was. We'll never forget that. We had many May Day programs, as those of you that went to school there remember, the wonderful times we had at the playground, on that playground with maypole dances and, and uh, the every, everything, anything you'd want. We had to be careful of snakes. We had a ditch along the west side of the school that we kept a snake kit, a snake kit at the school because uh, water moccasins did come on the ground once in a while, and we had to be prepared. We were lucky; no one ever was bit by a snake. Uh, getting to the 47 flood, uh, we, you've talked about the 47 flood. At that time, the school was not underwater, but the ground was. We could not get into the school. They had built a cafeteria on the east side of the school, and the water was up to the windows in that building, but not in the old building itself. It was up to the steps, but not on the floor of the building. So after, it was three weeks, I think, before we were able to get into the school at all. At the, uh, during that time, the Red Cross had opened a um, shelter at Nova, where Nova is now. It was the airfield at that time that was used during World War II for the Navy planes to take off, practice takeoff and landing, uh, like on the aircraft carriers. They had painted on the runways. Um, they had a nice barracks there, and of course they had left it by the 47, and so the Navy let the Navy people or the Red Cross use that building. After three weeks uh, of the flood, uh, the, some people started returning to the community after having had to leave because of the water. And um, there were about three teachers, as I remember at that time, that we went over to the school. The Army had lent an Army duck, I think it was called, and the men had gone to the houses and taken furniture up out of the water and put on orange crates that the Orange Grove people had uh, let everyone uh, use to get the furniture out of the water. They had gone and gotten clothes for people out of their houses. And well, they let us use the army duck to go to the school. And they took us up to the front door. We waited the water on the porch and got into the building and got some books out and records of the school. And we, they gave, the Red Cross gave us one room at the barracks that we opened school. We started with just a few children, and uh, the children kept returning, and our classes kept getting bigger and bigger. And finally, of course, they returned. There was one thing I would like to tell you, though, that happened on Halloween. The storm was in October, and uh, Halloween was coming. Well, we'd always had masquerades. So the teachers decided that the children should have some kind of a Halloween party. So they dressed up in any costume they could make up, and we paraded for the people who were living in the barracks. 
uh, we made one line and was were going around the building and um, we came upon a, a spot and uh, some of you that went to school there will remember that Mrs. Olive Zink was there at that time and uh, she was leading the line and she stopped and she held her hand up and she said wait a minute and at that time everyone stopped and she says Johnny go get the hoe and um, I don't remember who it was whether it was a Johnny <laughs> could have been Johnny Salvino anyway he went and got the hoe and they brought it and killed a rattlesnake. It was just a small one, but it was a rattlesnake. After the snake was removed, we continued on and had our Halloween parade. <laughs> I did teach school until 1980 when I retired. I love when you could tell like an old time Floridian says Miami as Miami. That's when you know they've been here a while. But thank you all for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed our podcast or have any requests for future episodes or questions, please let us know. You can email me at education at org. So until then, take care of each other.